Hi, I'm Stephanie Laska. I'm the author and creator of Dirty Lazy Keto, and today I'd like to welcome you to one of my classes. Every Friday in the Premium Supporters Group, I host a live, interactive class with hot topic discussions about things related to Dirty Lazy Keto. And today's class is all about weight loss plateaus, don't you hate those, and also weight loss stalls, and some tips and strategies for you to overcome them. So why don't you listen to today's class and find out if the premium supporter group might be something that you might be interested in. Check it out. Welcome to Friday Live, everybody. Welcome to Friday Live for premium supporters. So I'm Stephanie Laska. I'm the author and creator of Dirty Lazy Keto. In case this is your first time joining us, I want to say welcome. Welcome to you. And every Friday at 12 to 12.30 Pacific Standard Time, I host a live interactive um, program, kind of like a class. I try to look at hot topics that are trending in our group, um, problems or challenges or obstacles, or even uh, things that we can start celebrating or maybe just do better. So things that we all, I just feel like as a group, are trending, like hot topics. So this week's topic, um, as you may have heard, is what, to ex uh, what happens when you have a weight loss stall or when you hit a weight loss plateau. So I'm curious, has anyone out there in Facebook land, have any of you experienced a weight loss plateau or a weight loss stall? If you have, put a comment because I want to raise my hand. I know I have experienced that as well, and I'm betting that most of the listeners and most of the viewers there today, I'm betting most of you have experienced a weight loss stall or a plateau, just like I have. Um, in fact, I think it's very, very normal. I think it's an anticipated part of the process, and I think we should just jump right into it. Okay? We're ready, huh? Everybody's like... Solve my problems today, Stephanie. Solve the problems. And hopefully the goal is um, by the end of our 30-minute class, you'll leave today with a new idea, a new strategy. Maybe a light bulb will go off and you'll go, I should do that. I should try that. Or maybe you're just going to be like, okay, I have to think about that a little bit more. You know, like kind of like this, like, eh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it, but maybe I should try it. Sometimes that happens too, where just the seed is planted and then, you know, you have to kind of knock it around a little bit and consider it before you are ready to try that, that um, strategy. So let's, let's get ready. Let's get moving. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you have experienced a weight loss stall, and I see a lot of hands up, a lot of comments. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. And I just want to acknowledge the fact that this is very normal and everybody goes through it. You're not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not doing keto wrong. Um, you haven't made a mistake. So I think that's important to just get that right out there in the open. I think it's actually um, something you can anticipate. Um, just think about your body. Your body is super complicated. There's no way your body is going to be like, oh, I'll just go ahead and perfectly lose weight, you know, nonstop, you know, and life will be perfect. Like, come on. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? If you look at it maybe from an uh, outsider's perspective, you might say, well, yeah, I, uh, I guess she's right. Um, so let's just try to have an open mind today. Um, so I do want to acknowledge the fact, though, that when you do experience a weight loss plateau or a weight loss stall, which means, as we all know, the weight loss, you know, stops happening or, you know, it might kind of go like this. Um, but when that's going on, I just, I want you to feel like it's normal. But I also want to acknowledge the fact that it is super frustrating. And I also want to acknowledge the fact that it is sad, 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 sad. And I think that you might feel angry and you might feel anxious. Um, and you might even feel afraid. And the reason I suggest all of those feelings is that's the way I felt when I experienced a weight loss stall. And I think the biggest one that I felt was fear. Because for me, I had like invested everything because it had been working, right? Like, oh my gosh, this is the first thing that's ever worked in my entire life where I could lose weight and I'm happy and everything's great. And then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> and I 
them all. It's over. It's over. It's over. Like I was really worried, right? Like I was sad and, and very anxious, and I thought, you know, here we go again. Here we go again. Back on the the weight loss merry-go-round. So I get it. I just want to acknowledge the fact that it's a very emotional situation when it does occur. Um, so let's move forward and try to come up with some solutions for you today. All right? Because weight loss stalls, weight loss plateaus, this isn't something you're going to have to live with forever. I'm going to help you with some new ideas to help break the stall. All right? So first of all, I want to turn to the book because this is my keto Bible. This is where I look to for all my answers. Why? Because it's my story. And this is what worked for me. This is how I lost 140 pounds. So these are all the details, all the stories, all the secrets that I have are right here. And I'm going to ask you to turn to page 330. Okay, if you have your book with you, 330. And I'm just going to read one little short paragraph. Don't worry, I'm not going to bore you to death. Okay, so page 330. With only changes in my food selections, I was able to lose 50 pounds or so pretty easily. But then one day, it just seemed to slow down. Dirty Lazy Keto worked for me until it didn't. Don't laugh, but this was a very sad day when I had to admit to myself that eating habits alone might actually have limitations for weight loss. That's like the saddest story ever, right? And then I'm going to read a little bit more after um, when we get to number six. So hold that thought. I want to get into some strategies right away because I don't want you to feel like all this is just talk. So let's go into, um, I have six strategies that I want you to think about. Just think about. I'm not telling you these are the right answers. I'm just suggesting that this is what worked for me. So if it worked for me, and I've been able to keep this 140 pounds off now for seven years, you know, hell, it's worth a try. So think about it, right? Like, what, what do you got to lose if you're having a stall? All right, so first of all, I want to talk about fat bombs. Fat bombs, and just fat in general. Like, I brought a thing of coconut oil here today just because, um, but really any fat. Let's just think about fat. How much fat are you currently enjoying in your diet? Because yes, Fat is fabulous. Fat is a key part of keto, and uh, fat is a key part of dirty, lazy keto. However, however, how much fat are you actually eating? Because as we may know, um, fat is the most dense macronutrient. So when compared to, let's say, protein or carbohydrates, fat has almost double the calories per gram. So if you are eating just extra fat for no reason, like you're not even hungry, you're like, oh, it's the end of the day and I'm supposed to have some fat, so I better eat some fat. No, no. Okay, let's, let's cut that um, mentality from our brain. You are not supposed to do anything. If you're not hungry and it's the end of the day, then you're done eating, right? Um, fat is supposed to make your healthy food taste better, and that's it. You don't need any fat bombs. You really don't. Um, I see this a lot with Starbucks in particular. Um, yes, we all love uh, tasty, delicious drinks, um, but at Starbucks in particular, they put a lot of heavy whipped cream and whipped cream and other deliciousness, right, that we all love, um, but it's really easy to overdo. And again, use fat to make healthy food taste better, not your coffee, sadly. You know, put your fat on vegetables or stir-fry vegetables as opposed to just pouring it in your Starbucks drink. So anyway, these are just a couple of things to get you started thinking about. Take a look at the fat. That could be strategy one. You never know. That could be it right there. Or on the flip side, maybe you're not having enough fat. Now, that's a weird one. Let's just pause and consider that. Maybe you're not having enough fat in your life. I know when I first started all of this process, I was like, why am I eating fat? It's so weird. Um, but sometimes you need a little bit more fat in your diet in order to curb your hunger so that you just stop eating less food in general. And it also puts you back into ketosis. Give that a try. All right, step number two, strategy number two. I would like you to consider, oh, you know how I love my vegetables, but I want you to increase the amount of low-carb cruciferous vegetables in your diet. So right now, if you're having a stall, or, you know, someday you might have a stall, so this is good to know, 
If you are having a stall, think about how many vegetables do I eat per day? How many servings? Do you have one? Do you have two? Do you have three or four or five? Whatever your number is, increase it. Now, you don't have to go crazy and be like, oh, I'm going to be like Stephanie and eat a whole pound of celery every day, because I do. Um, but you can start where you are at, wherever you are at, and increase the amount of vegetables slowly. And I am very confident that this one, this is a magic bullet right here. So listen to me. Write this down somewhere. Eat your vegetables. I promise you it is the, max, ma the, the, the magic elixir for weight loss. So start where you're at and just slowly increase the amount of vegetables in your diet. Um, it will make you more full and then you'll stop eating other things. So it's pretty magical. And I do recommend eating as many as you can earlier in the day. Again, because it fills you up and then you're not hungry and snacking on other things like whatever, granola bar, uh, you know, like protein bars or wanting, you know, Cheez-Its or like cheese wisps, I should say, or any, any low carb food really. But when you fill up with these, then you stop wanting all those like little, you know, keto snacks because they are dangerous. All right, next up on our list, I would like you, if you're having a weight loss stall or if you're having a plateau, to do a little audit of your labels. Now, what I mean by this is just think about what you're eating on a regular basis. Like for myself, I do eat peanut butter. Why? Because I'm lazy keto. I don't necessarily go buy fancy nut butter. Sometimes I'm lazy and I eat whatever my kids are having and I'll put some of this on celery or whatever in a smoothie. Um, but here's the deal. If I were to do, if I was having a, a plateau or a stall and I was really freaked out about it, if I were to take a look at the, the nutrition label here and read the ingredients, I would see there's some sugar in here, like straight up real sugar. I'd be like, what? What? I don't want to be eating sugar. Now, obviously, if you're having a stall, or you're having a plateau, this might be an area for you to be concerned about. Um, additionally, I think taking a look at the number of servings in the package is pretty important. Um, in this particular package, I buy peanut butter like this in little tiny containers. Why do I do that? Because I have no sense of portion control. <laughs> like, let's be real. If it's a jar of peanut butter, I will like eat, you know, it's embarrassing. I just can't stop. So I have to have some portion control when it comes to um, high net carb items. However, if you are having trouble and you think, oh, I just have a little peanut butter. Really? 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 Like, be honest with yourself. How much is a little? Are you having a teaspoon? Are you having a tablespoon? Are you having a quarter cup? Uh, taking a look at the nutritional label, reminding yourself about the sample size. Um, the serving size, and also just being honest with yourself about what you're actually eating, I think that can be pretty helpful. So this is a great strategy for everybody, not just people that are in a stall. All of us need to take a look at that once in a while, right? Next up, are we having fun? Are you learning new things yet? Even if you're not learning new things, you're thinking to yourself, yep, she's, she's right, she's right, dang it, dang it, she's right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to help here. I'm not trying to like make you get rid of your sad peanut butter. I wouldn't be that mean. Um, next on our list is eating out. And I have a McDonald's cup only because I went there yesterday through the drive-thru and this is my symbol of eating out. Um, and you know what? When we eat out, things get a little loose, don't they? It's like, oh, I don't know what's in that. Like, oh, I think it's two net carbs. I think it's five. Sure, you know, you get kind of lying to yourself a little bit. If you're like me, that's what I've, I've caught myself doing that, where I think, oh, I think this is, you know, such and such net carbs. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, well, yeah, it's fine. And especially if you go to a restaurant that doesn't have the nutrition information online, that's pretty tricky, right? Like when you're at like a mom and pop restaurant or you don't have internet and you're thinking, oh, yeah, it's just a, you know, grilled chicken breasts with broccoli and alfredo sauce, it's totally fine. And then you get home and look it up, sure enough, it has maybe more than you anticipated. Maybe that restaurant puts a bunch of flour in their alfredo sauce and you didn't anticipate that. So there could be a lot of hidden carbs when you're eating out at restaurants. Just take a look at it. Either do better homework, like more research as to what you're ordering and ask more questions and look at their website. 
or stay home and cook. I know, I know, it was terrible. Stephanie is so mean. I have all these horrible ideas today, right? Well, you know, it's true. Sometimes when we're at home cooking and making recipes, you know, first of all, we're going to save money, right? You all know my new book coming out with the dirt cheap. I want you to save money. That's important. Um, but also, more importantly, when you're cooking at home, I think you have a lot more control over the ingredients. You make the choices. You get to decide if you're using a sugar-free sweetener or if you're using um, almond flour. Like, it's up to you. And you can really control what's in your food. You have a better sense of portions. We all know at restaurants, everything is supersized. Big, huge plates of food. Even um, healthy food that's low-carb, salads, they're huge. And maybe at a restaurant, you might eat more than what you would eat at home, simply because it's on the plate. That's what happens to me. I don't know about you. All right, moving on. Hopefully some of these are helpful. Uh, this is my big weight from the pool. Now, I know you don't want to hear about the exercise. I know you don't want to hear about it. You're like, no, no, please don't go there. And I promised you I was going to keep reading from my book here on page 331. Because I'm with you. It's page 330 to 331. I just want to read this next part. Before the stall, I was convinced I wouldn't have to exercise. So far, the weight had come off pretty easily without breaking a sweat. I started questioning that theory, though, when my rate of losing weight changed from 10 pounds a month to just a few measly pounds. That sounds so annoying in retrospect, I know. Perhaps I knew in my heart that I needed exercise to break the plateau, but getting started sure wasn't easy. You might laugh, but it took me weeks to get off the couch. I am that stubborn. I really did have to write it on my calendar like a dentist appointment, like I was dreading court. It's true. True story. Now, you might be watching this at home and think to yourself, well, Stephanie, I'm exercising. I'm exercising and I'm having a plateau. What gives? Well, take a look at the kind of exercise you are currently doing. Is your heart rate up high enough? Are you going long enough? Um, what kind of exercise are you doing? Are you incorporating weights? Are you doing something strenuous? Is your heart rate up? Um, are you pushing yourself? Now, what worked for you in the past, like maybe walking, may not work in the future. So let's say you've lost a little bit of weight or a lot of weight, and now you're stuck, and you're trying to get that needle to move. Try incorporating some different exercise. Try pushing yourself a little harder. Maybe try a different type of activity or more often. I remember during my weight loss journey, there was a point where things were, you know, I was toward the end, and I really had to, like, push myself. I was doing my workouts in the morning, like my Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but then I started incorporating an evening walk after dinner. That wasn't like that big of a deal. I wasn't, you know, off, you know, playing rounds of tennis and golf and things like that, but it was just more time on my feet, more activity, just more movement, and it, let's be honest, more time away from the kitchen. So hopefully that idea might help you just a little bit. Now, I want you to notice a couple of the suggestions that I'm sharing that I'm not sharing. <laughs> I know that's weird, but the opposite effect. A lot of times when people feel like their weight loss has stalled, the first thing they want to do is quit. Or they want to go on a fast, like maybe an egg fast. That's pretty popular, right? I'm sure you've heard about it. People say, oh, well, I'm just going to eat eggs. Eggs, eggs, eggs. I'll eat 10, 12 eggs a day, and then I'll break my stall, and then I'll be good. Really? <laughs> really? I'm going to lean in. I'm going to say, really? Really? Are we going there? Like, I just want to have a real conversation about the egg fast and the fasting and, you know, all that good stuff. Like, the whole point of Dirty Lazy Keto, in my opinion, is to develop a positive relationship with food where you're not punishing yourself, you're not starving yourself, you're not miserable. I want you to feel happy. I want you to feel satisfied. I want you to feel good about yourself and what you're eating. Now, if it were me, and I was eating eggs all day, for days upon days, 
that is not going to work for me. Like, I'm going to feel bad about myself. I might feel angry and resentful. Um, and then also quitting, obviously. That's cutting off your nose to spite your face. I think that's the expression. Um, oftentimes, you just have to believe. Um, I want you to believe in the process. I want you to believe in yourself. I'm asking you to have some blind faith because I know this works. And it's not just me. Um, since I started Dirty Lazy Keto, I mean, we're talking about thousands upon thousands of people from all over the world who have lost weight on this way of life. And it works. It just does. You can't trick the system. You don't need ketones. You don't need drinks. You don't need pills. You don't need exogenous Pruviate or any of that garbage powders. You don't need collagen. You don't need any of that stuff. Regular food, real food, positive self-talk, activity, healthy food, and let's not forget water. <laughs> I bring out this giant, I think it's a gallon. Yes, this is one gallon of water to prove I'm a point. I probably drink a gallon of water every day. How much are you drinking? Take a look at what you're honestly drinking and increase it. If you're having a stall, it may just be that all that, you know, forgive me for being blunt, but maybe just all that food is still in there and you need to flush it out. I know, right? Uh, but seriously, water will help you feel fuller. It will help your digestion and it'll make you feel better about yourself. You just feel good. Your skin looks good. Um, you just feel healthier. So give this a try as the last resort. No egg fast, none of that. And then lastly, I know I keep saying last week, but I keep thinking of more things. Now this one, you know, it's not as fun, but sometimes it just might be as simple as dialing back the amount of net carbs that you are eating. Um, you know, during my weight loss process, I shared with everybody that I ate within a range of net carbs. So I wasn't like 20, 15, ah. You know, I wasn't really militant like that. I had more of a flexible range. I was like, yeah, 25 to 50 is good. Some days I had more, some days I had less. But when I went through a stall, or if I entered a stall, I would take a look at that and be more honest and say, well, am I really at the 20 end or am I at the 50 end? And maybe I could dial that back a little bit. Maybe I don't need to have a protein bar. Um, maybe I don't need to have cream in my coffee at all. Um, I started just to dial it back and write things down even though I'm dirty lazy keto sometimes it's helpful just to get out you know a little piece of paper and get your pen and just start taking some notes you know you could write little notes to yourself it doesn't have to be fancy you don't need an app but write it down for at least until you break your stall breakfast you know eggs I had two eggs so two you know just simple just for you nobody else no fanciness no apps just keep track for a few days and be honest because I think sometimes we let things slide a little and our portion control gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we slip in more and more food. You know, when all else fails, this group is here to support you. I welcome you to, you know, use your phone, take pictures of all of your meals and post them to the group and say, hey guys, this is, hey, hey gals, this is my breakfast, this is my lunch, this is my snack. What can I do differently? Do you see any opportunities for me? Um, it's not a, a reason to be embarrassed. Again, we've all been through this, and if you haven't, I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Why? Because it's normal. Your body is an organism that's gonna woo, ebb and flow and get used to things and change over time. All right? So I just talked like nonstop. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'd love to know if you guys have any questions. Um, we have time for some questions and answers about stalls or um, anything related to dirty, lazy keto that you might like to ask. You can just type it in the comments. I know. I'm hearing some comments about stuck for five days. Five days. I know that seems like forever, doesn't it? It seems like an eternity five days. I'm going to encourage you to keep on, keep on. Five days is, we might have to wait a little longer. If you had like five weeks, that might be a little different. But five days, come on. I'm going to push back on that one a little bit. Let's see. I'm not, I'm not, I'm teasing you in a good way. I don't want you to feel like I'm um, pointing you out because I understand how, you know, it's scary and frustrating and everybody wants everything to happen faster. 
I get it. Anybody else? Any other questions? <laughs> I love it. My weight loss gain looked like the COVID graphs. <laughs> right? We were all like, we were going down. We were good. We were doing so good. And then all of a sudden, dang it, things started going back up. Uh, that's funny. And I know Mare is funny. She's our girl. And if you hit a plateau, don't give up. That is important information, and I'm glad you said that because it can be tempting. You're like, screw it. I've gained two pounds or I've been stuck at this weight. You know, Mah! it's easy to want to just say, forget it. Throw in the towel. You know, my girlfriend at work told me I could, you know, eat more carbs. Who, who came up with that one? <laughs> that one cracks me up. It's like, oh, I'm not losing weight fast enough, so I'm going to eat more carbs to change my metabolism? No. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm sorry to tell you the truth, but yeah. Mm -mm. I think I might be more excited if you try drinking more water or increase your vegetables or your activity than introducing carbs into your diet. Sorry. Gotta tell you the truth. Well, at least the truth from my perspective. Everyone's got a different story. Any other comments from the group or questions? More veggies. Ooh, food that takes you longer to chew because <laughs> then you eat less. You're so cute. Um, well, the veggies, you know, for real. We've got to do the veggies. Um, one of our episodes here on Friday Premium Live was all about low-carb veggies, and I literally bought like 40 bucks worth of um, that's a lot for me because they're a dollar each at my dollar store. Um, but I bought like 40 vegetables and I was going through them all and telling you guys about it. So take a look at that low carb um, veggie episode. Also in the podcast, I have an episode on romancing the vegetable. It's at the beginning of season two on Dirty Lazy Girl. And we just talk about creative ways to get more veggies into your diet. So I will also post that to the group later. Um, and if you have one of my cookbooks, you know, give those a try. The new cookbook was interesting. Um, I was working on the table of contents. It's the Dirt Cheap cookbook. And I was counting, like, how many, you know, are in each category. Because I have those fun little bullets that go at the top, you know, like, um, vegetarian, I'm hangry, um, less mess, fancy for guests, like, at the very top of each uh, recipe. So anyway, I was counting them up, and there's a ton of vegetarian in here and I was like oh that's weird why do I have so many vegetarian I'm you know I'm not vegetarian and I'm like oh yeah it's because like more than half of my diet is vegetables that's what I'm talking about all the time and if you look at the dirty lazy keto food pyramid at the very bottom you'll see it's low carb veggies protein and healthy fat those three things make up the crux of dirty lazy keto I did not say protein bars <laughs> that was not in there I did not say Starbucks so anyway, I know I'm laughing, but it's it's a real problem. We're, we're all struggling, so you're not alone, especially now. Now is trickier than ever. I want to close today by just saying, I believe in you. Don't give up. I know it's frustrating. I know you're worried. I know you're like, ah, I want this to stop. It's been two seconds. But I want you to keep on, keep on. I want you to believe in the process. Um, at times, it may be dark. And I get that, but let me be the friend to help you. I am here for you. I'm going to cry. It's not easy, okay? So I'm going to be here. All right, love you guys. Have a wonderful week, and keto on. Every Friday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, I host a live Q&A and hot topic discussion to help supporters of Dirty Lazy Keto. You can join in on the fun. Um, all information is at facebook.com forward slash Dirty Lazy Keto. Become a supporter, small group interaction, one-on-one -on -one support, live Q&A every Friday, a different class for hot topics. I'm here to help you and support you on your journey.